Hi YouTube and Blade Forms, John here. Today I'm here to do a review of the Kershaw Leak. Kershaw Leak is one of my favorite uh, EDC type pocket knives. Um, and if it weren't for just a one minor, to me, major shortcoming, I would be carrying this quite often. It would probably beat the Benchmade Valet for pocket time um, and would give the 940-1 some competition. Um, I'm not sure this would ever displace my 940-1 because I just really like that knife a lot. But really if it weren't for that one shortcoming, which I'll go over, this will be my second favorite knife after my Benchmade 940-1. So just to go over um, basic specs, you're looking at 7 inch overall length, 4 inch handle length, 3 inch blade length, 3 ounce overall weight, and a 0 0.09 inch uh, thick blade stock. Okay. So that's really the golden ratio for knives in my opinion, 4 inches by 3 inches, so 4 to 3 ratio for handle to, uh, to blade, okay. So this knife, uh, you have the Sandvik 14C28N steel, a Swedish steel. Uh, it, it is born from razor steel, okay, so it's a very fine grain. It can be heat treated to a very high hardness for uh, stainless steel, uh, considering it's only 6 tenths of a percent carbon. Uh, these can be heat treated up to 62 and you'll often find them at 60 to 61 on the uh, Rockwell hardness scale. Okay, the handle is stainless steel. Okay, and it's a very comfortable handle. You can see it's an open back construction, uh, at least partially open back. It does have a backspacer here and that does serve a purpose. That backspacer has to be there to um, partially uh, hold on to the torsion bar in here which causes this knife to be spring loaded here. Okay, it's not an automatic knife, of course. You have to uh, engage it with your finger for it to start going. But once you get it past uh, the tension there, it, it'll fly open. Um, it's a really simple system, and I think um, that torsion bar mechanism is what helps keep the cost of this knife down, uh, among other things. Um, but really, this is a very high quality knife, and you get a lot for your money with this. It's very high value. They're typically found online for $40. In retail stores typically around $60. It's made in USA. It's just, it's a great knife. The guy who designed this, Ken Onion, he just, he's a genius when it comes to knife designs. Um, this thing, it's very comfortable in the hand. Your, 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 your hand goes on here exactly where it, where it should go. When you put your hand on here, your thumb goes right to the uh, jimping right there on the blade. It's a very comfortable grip. Um, the blade is very, um, very utilitarian. Uh, it's almost like a razor blade. It's almost perfectly straight except for a small amount of belly on the front here. So that has some pros and that has some cons. Um, benefits and disadvantages uh, when you're doing certain types of cutting tasks. Under most cutting tasks this blade is very useful. It's only under some cutting tasks such as uh, slicing uh, produce in the kitchen that it poses a slight uh, issue just because there's no belly. Um, that basically ends up with your knuckles dragging on the cutting board if you want to make certain cuts. Uh, I consider this knife's nearest competitor to be the Spyderco Delica. And um, this really is one of my favorite EDC knives as I said earlier. And the Delica is also one of my favorites as well. But there are certain things I like better about this one and there are certain things I like better about this one. I'll try to go over those in this video here. Okay, so uh, this Sandvik Steel has a very tight grain, a very fine edge. And it takes a very sharp edge very easily. And uh, what may be a surprise to a lot of people is this steel on this knife holds a very good edge. Um, and it stays razor sharp for a long time. And it stays usably sharp for quite a long time as well. Um, I did the cut test with this. And this was my second best performer so far. Um, it beat out both Delica's and it beat out the ZT450 in the cut test. Um, in order it went 360 cuts. Uh, I think this was 438 cuts. And then this was 560 cuts, okay? You, you really get your money's worth on here. If you're looking for a knife that's going to be a great EDC knife, that is going to be a very good slicer and hold a very sharp edge, this is going to be one of your best bets. Um, if you need a hard use knife, this is not going to be one of your best bets. If you need hard use, you might want to go to the Stainless Steel Delica or the ZT450, okay? These will give you more hard use capability, um, but you will be sacrificing slicing performance, okay? But for pure EDC tests, cutting an apple, cutting a thread, opening an envelope, opening up a, a delivery box from UPS, this is going to be one of the best knives you can have. It's great for puncturing the tape on a package. It's great for slicing open envelopes. 
it's just a very nice blade shape for all those tasks. Um, the reason, one of the reasons it falls short on hard use, um, first of all, the blade is very thin, which is what makes it a good cutter, but it also makes it not good for hard use. Having such a thin blade, it's susceptible to bending um, if you put too much pressure on something. Also, the tip is very thin, so the tip could break off in very hard use. But to me, you'd really have to be abusing this to break it or really using it outside of its class. Um, but having such a fine tip, it has some other advantages. It's good for you know, picking a splinter out of your skin. Uh, because it is such a fine tip. And I've personally never had this tip break, okay? So I wouldn't call it weak by any means. All right, so uh, the big downside on this knife to me, uh, first of all, I don't like uh, spring assisted personally, okay? But that's just a personal preference, okay? But this knife does have a manual safety here, which you can engage by sliding this bolt back or forth. So um, that means that you can carry this in your pocket, just uh, floating in your pocket, if you engage the safety here, it makes it safe to just drop into your pocket, okay? Otherwise, you can use the clip. The clip, I do not like, okay? The clip from the factory actually comes mounted to this side here, okay? And that makes it really a left-hand user's knife, okay? Or it means you have to put it, it basically means you have to put it in your left front pocket or your right rear pocket. And for me, that doesn't work. So I have to reverse the clip so I can put it in my right front pocket like most right-hand knife carriers do, okay? Now the way it comes from the factory, it sits in the pocket nicely and it has decent clip retention. When you put it on this way, you have a solid inch of the blade sticking out of your pocket. It looks funky and it feels like it's going to fall out all the time because you really have about almost a third of the knife sticking out, about a, about a quarter. Um, but on top of that, the clip retention is just not that good. Uh, this knife uh, can easily slide out of your pocket. okay? And that's a big deal, especially if you carry this in your back pocket because that means this will be susceptible to being lost. Um, another thing I don't like about the clip, if you see here, the distance from the tip of the clip here to the handle frame is very small. So that means it's hard to get it over your pocket to get it, you know, into your pocket. So it's hard to get it over that seam. Um, you have to really pay attention when you're putting it in. It takes some getting used to. And it makes it difficult to put it in your back pocket just because there's so little room for air when you're trying to slide that over your pocket there. Okay? So because of its issues staying in the pocket, uh, it's a weak clip retention. Um, I docked some points off of that. I'll go over that in the end. Um, also, uh, for hard use, uh, one of the reasons I say it's not hard use besides the blade is the handle. On the handle, there's... I don't have the proper terminology here, but there's no butt on this thing, okay? You compare it to your ZT, you see how it has this uh, section right at the back here? How it swoops up right at the end there? That makes it so it cradles your hand, so your hand won't slip off very easily, okay? On here, you see how it's very smooth, okay? Your hand can just slide right off the back end, okay? Because there's no butt on it, all right? And so that combined with the fact that the blade handle, the knife handle is very thin and not very wide, it, it makes it so you, you will never really be able to use this for very hard use without the chance of it slipping out of your hands, okay? That's not a bad thing because to me, this knife's main purpose is EDC and it has the thin blade to prove it, okay? So hard use is not something you should be doing with this, but if you do hard use, just keep in mind that it is not the strongest grip that you can possibly have. There's not much to grip onto, but for EDC uses, it's as good as you need, okay? So this knife gets super razor sharp. After I did my cutting test, I was able to bring it back to a razor sharp edge uh, within about two minutes using the Spyderco Double Stuff uh, pocket sharpening stone here. One of my favorite sharpeners to use. Just to show you how sharp it is, I'm going to cut through my paper towel here. So you see how easily that cut through there? No problem at all. Okay, let me show you a phone book paper. Listen to that. Just take a listen. You hear that? <laughs> There's almost no sound. It's almost like it's cutting through air. And that's one of the reasons I love this knife. It gets so sharp. You can almost do surgery with this. I mean, I can literally Cut, I can literally shave skin off of my finger. Like I can actually cut in and very easily. Um, and it's also good for trimming your fingernails too because you can keep this so sharp. It, it makes cutting through anything a breeze. It's just, it passes through material so easily because this thing is so thin and it's so thin right behind the edge and it has a nice hollow grind. Not too steep of a hollow grind, not too thin of a hollow grind. Very useful. All right, check out paper here. All right, nice and sharp. Now this is a, a test I like to do because it's something that has real 
you know, real life uh, purposes, is cutting electrical tape here. It has a good grip for cutting the electrical tape. You can hold it in your hand easily and it cuts through so nicely, okay? Uh, speaking of grip, this knife is comfortable in the standard grip, but it's also comfortable in other grips as well, okay? Like this, for peeling an apple. The handle is just so, so comfortable for so many different uses, okay? It's just a great all-around knife. Let me show you what it's like to cut through some cardboard here, okay? You see how easy that's cutting through? And look how, look how straight these cuts are too, okay? I'll do that with my Delica here. This is also a good cutter, but just to compare. All right, that, there was something in the cardboard there. That wasn't the fault of the Delica. Okay, so the Delica goes through pretty easily too. It didn't go through as straight on one of the cuts as these ones did, and it didn't go through quite as easily, but it still went through easy. But this went through noticeably easier, the Delica, or the, uh, the Leak did. So the Leak went through the cardboard noticeably easier. Now, one point where I find the Leak to excel, where the Delica fails, is cutting, uh, whittling a stick, okay? So when you're whittling a stick, you'll notice how the grip is nice and uh, natural and comfortable here and you're able to really push on top of the blade to get into the wood. If you see here how I'm doing that. Now if you check on the Delica, you see here the grip is not so natural now, okay? My thumb is really digging into this thumb ramp here and it really actually begins to hurt when you do it for a little while. And so when I end up whittling a stick, what I'm doing is choking up way above the blade. It's not as safe that way and it's not as comfortable, but that's what you have to do. At least that's what I do. So. For me, for whittling and woodworking, uh, the leak is better actually. And with the really sharp and fine edge and the hollow grind, it actually cuts into the wood better than the Delica does. Um, the Delicas just don't do good with wood. All right, stop recording. Um, so I was just saying that this cuts through wood and sticks better than the Delica does. This leak with the hollow grind really digs into the uh, the stick and the wood, where the Delica it takes a little bit more force to get in, um, and it's just not as comfortable to work with. Now I just want to cut through some rope. So you can make a really small loop on here and that's another benefit of this blade. It's because the blade is pretty narrow. You can get into tight spaces like this here, okay? And you can cut right through the rope. And that actually cut through pretty easily. Take a look at this cardboard here too that I just cut. Look how I'm able to cut through there. I'm able to cut through these tiny little pieces of cardboard without crushing it, okay? That, that is an impressive feat. I'm sure the Delica can do it, but let's just give it a try. Yeah, see the Delica can do it too. Not quite as easily though, more resistance. Um, but this one goes through really nicely. It does clean cuts, okay? So, I think I've gone over everything here. Um, oh yeah, the knife opens by a flipper, okay? And also by thumb studs, which these thumb studs double as a kind of a stopping pin. A, this is what stops the knife from going any further. It, it locks up right against the back here, okay? And this is a frame lock, of course. Uh, there's no hardened steel insert. It's just the, uh, the steel from the handle is acting as the lock, okay? So this is not as um, resilient as the ZT, which has the hardened insert, okay? So that's another reason this is not a hard use knife, okay? Um, you'll find out that when you're doing some heavy cuts and you're really pushing into it, this will actually slide in a little bit farther too. You'll feel it when you disengage the, um, the lock, okay? So, I think I've gone over everything that I needed to go over. Um, cleaning on this with the open handle is not as easy as other open handle knives just because it's so narrow, the handles. Um, but, here's the review that I came up with. It came up as one of my highest rated knives, okay? And there's uh, two different ratings I gave to this, and I'll go over that with you here. So, on the carrying, uh, the drawing of the knife, and the deployment of the knife, I gave it a 2.75 out of 5. That's the second lowest rating on here after the Sage 3. If you'll remember, the Sage 3 got a low rating because it was so wide in the pocket, you can't even get your hand in there. This gets a low rating because of the clip retention. The clip is, I just can't stand the clip, honestly, for me personally. Um, when it's in my right front pocket, a lot of the handle sticks out. Uh, furthermore, the clip retention is very weak. And with the slick stainless steel handle, uh, it makes it so this can easily slide out of your pocket, okay? Plus, the 
the distance between the handle and the tip of the clip here makes it hard to actually slip over your pocket. So when you combine that, it can come out of your pocket. That coming out of your pocket makes it lose a lot of points. Okay, that's a big, that's a big um, docking there on the points. Uh, with the clip, that's hard to slip over the pocket. That docks at another couple, you know, fractions of a, a point. Okay, and then with the uh, knife sticking an inch out of the pocket, that docks at another a certain amount. Okay. Um, but if you disregard those things, the knife actually carries in the pocket very well. Um, it's very, it's not very heavy. It's actually only three ounces, but it doesn't feel like that. It's very light and it's very narrow. So you can still use your pocket for other things. And for that reason, it gets good ratings. Um, and that, that's the only thing that really keeps it from having like a one or a two. Okay. Um, if it weren't for that silly clip, if it had a better design, this could have been all the way up on a four or a four and a half. All right. So slicer. The second best slicer after the Sage 3. And it's really not that far behind the Sage 3, so I give it a 4.75 out of 5. It slices through that rope like crazy. It slices through cardboard so nice and straight and so easy with so little resistance. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, ergonomics, uh, four, and a quarter, 4 and a quarter out of 5. Uh, I docked it points on ergonomics because of the lack of the butt on here, because your, your hand can slide off. But as far as comfort, this knife is top notch in so many different grips. It's an incredibly comfortable grip. But if you, the only reason I docked it at three quarters of a point is just because of that lack of the butt, okay? And to me, it, it's not worth docking anymore because this is not a hard use knife, okay? If it were a hard use knife, it would have been docked more. But for EDC use, it makes the class right. So I docked it three quarters because if you do use it on something hard, it is a, a possibility for it to slip, okay? Now for cutting and edge performance and use, I also gave that 4.25 out of 5, okay? And the only reason it really lost any points on that is just because of the lack of the belly. That just makes it uh, a little harder to do cutting through produce and just certain other minor tasks, but that's it. Um, and then for maintenance, um, 4 out of 5. Uh, it really is so easy to sharpen. Um, the reason I docked it points is for cleaning and maintenance because the handle is so narrow and it does have part of the open part blocked by the backspacer here. It does make it a little bit more difficult to clean this and oil it. Um, plus on the blade, the steel is very easy to remove the metal with sharpening, but the blade shape isn't as easy to sharpen as a, a knife uh, shape as a Delica. This Delica with a nice constant curve on it, that makes it so easy to sharpen with that blade shape. This blade shape, since it kind of has an abrupt change in angle, that makes it so it just takes a little bit more um, precision when you're sharpening. So I docked it just a small amount because of that on the sharpening and the maintenance for cleaning. So overall, I give this a 20 out of 25, an 80%. My second highest rated after the Benchmade 940-1. Okay, now the stipulation here. Um, if you're a left-handed knife user, or you prefer to carry the knife in your front left pocket or your back right pocket, this rating here goes from 2.75 to 3.75, okay? And that makes the grand total 21 out of 25. And that makes for a total of 84%, okay? So for right-handed users, or if you carry in your right front pocket or back left, I rated it 80%. If you're a left-handed user, or you carry it in your left front or your back right, it's an 84%. Uh, very highly rated. Uh, excellent knife, and I would recommend it to anyone. And just edge retention, it just, it's not a good argument against this knife anymore. Once I did that cut test and it beat the Delica with a supposedly higher end steel, um, at that point I realized that this, this really is premium through and through. So, the Leak, to me, one of the best knives you can possibly buy. And if you can only have one knife, one folding knife for EDC for the rest of your life, this would not be a bad knife to have. So, out of all my reviews so far, this one and the 940-1 are my favorites. You know, they get the highest rankings. You know, the Valet is the one I'm carrying the most right now after the 940-1. But if it weren't for this pocket clip, this would actually be my second most carried knife after my 940-1. But as far as using this, to me, after the 940, this is my most fun knife to use, and I really enjoy it a lot. And so, that is my review. Thank you guys for viewing, and have a nice day. Bye.